that good luck has been my lot. I was, uh, I fell to the then best of the networks. I could have fallen to the worst of them. And uh, I, they gave me great freedom. And the freedom is the name of the game and it's the name of writing. And uh, when I was called in by CBS after years of service to write a program celebrating our victory, our imminent victory in, in Europe in the World War II, they didn't say to me, uh, or what will the program cost? Who will narrate it? Who will be starred in it? Uh, when can you have this ready? Can we feed the first 20 pages? They heard the first, the first hearing of the brass of that program was when it was broadcast. And God bless the, the CBS of that day and, uh, and William S. Paley under whose aegis it all occurred. I was lucky to have been uh, drafted as a director of CBS and writer and uh, because among other things they would let a program run over by a minute or two whereas its great rival they would cut a man in mid-sentence if when they reached the end of a program whereas uh, uh, CBS accommodated the concept that their writers were human. This is Freedom. called on freedom. Freedom isn't something to be won and then forgotten. It must be renewed like soil after yielding good crops, must be rewound like a faithful clock, exercised like a healthy man, like a healthy muscle. Free men who forget that lose their freedom. Ray Bradbury gives me too much credit for his career because if I did not exist, Ray Bradbury would be a great writer. Uh, and I made a few suggestions along uh, career lines which uh, uh, Ray was happy to fulfill, and he's uh, a great American writer, and he's in more dictionaries and encyclopedias than uh, I will ever be. He claims to have written the Marshall Chronicles for me and because of me, and uh, that's my one claim to fame. An interview with MacArthur would be unforgettable on any grounds. Uh, he was smoking a pipe and I sneaked a question in while he was lighting, relighting the pipe and he pulled the pipe out of his mouth and went ahead and I didn't, I interviewed him for about 60 minutes and not once did I a, a get to ask him a question, and he told Frayne Baker, uh, Frayne Baker his, his aide, that I was one of the most interview, interesting interviews he had had. <laughs> Work hard and often, and don't be afraid to be influenced by writers, by other writers, and uh, I, I am indebted to writers who influence me and uh, will never uh, be able to repay that debt if I live to be 200. Thank Age, you. you sneak, yes. you pilfer uh, blossoms, swipe cookies from the jar when our backs are turned, 
look innocent when you change our handwriting and forge our names. You're the commonest of thieves, yet like a magpie, you leave something in exchange for what you steal. Dollops of understanding, a shot of toe of wisdom, remembrances of love, and now and then, for beauty taken, beauty given. Uh, uh, it's, it's wonderful to be able to work, and I am grateful for every day that I have left to me, because uh, at, at, at the 80s, in the 80s, most people think they are old. I can tell them uh, there's a family whose father lived to 110 and whose brother is alive today in Washington, D.C. at 107. And I am about to embark on my 100th year and uh, I am feel very, very lucky to have lasted this long in this perilous world. And uh, I, I would like to go out in a peaceful, on a peaceful day, in a peaceful, and be buried in a, in a peaceful way, knowing that my nation is at peace and my family is at peace, and my friends are at peace, because that's a peace worth piecing together. <laughs>